What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and aside from Monday, this past week was a relatively quiet one for Apple, with no new betas being released or no new press releases getting published. But on Monday, we did get the release of iOS and iPadOS 14.6, along with watchOS, macOS, tvOS, and HomePod OS updates. So anyways, in this video, as we do every single weekend, let's go ahead and recap the week of Apple, and most importantly, the latest iOS updates, which are currently iOS 14.6, which is out to the public, and for beta testers, iOS 14.7, beta one. So we're going to talk about some additional new features and changes, the performance, the battery life, and more. So let's start off with iOS 14.6, which was released to the public on Monday, about a month after the first beta was released. And if you missed my what's new video on 14.6, that will be linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But the features in this update were relatively minor. However, since that video was published on Monday, two very important things have come out that were not mentioned in my What's New video. And the first thing actually has to do with something I personally use every single day, and that is shortcuts. So if we go into my shortcuts application right here, I'm gonna pull up iOS 14.5.1, which is right here on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. I'm gonna pull up the shortcuts application on this device, and I wanna show you guys how much faster shortcuts run now on iOS 14.6 and also of course on 14.7 as well. But iOS 14.6 introduced something, some kind of major change to shortcuts where everything just runs faster. So it could be shortcuts, automations, everything runs faster. So apparently the split and the match actions were notoriously bad and took forever to load in the shortcuts application on previous versions. But 14.6, of course, fixed that and just made everything run faster. So I'm gonna do a little comparison here on these two. So we're gonna do match versus JS right here. And look at that 14.6 you know this is obviously just a minor difference but it does make a difference split versus match versus js right here if we tap on that you can see 14.6 is going to be continuously faster at performing these shortcuts and most importantly for automations this is something where you know i can't really demonstrate one right now but the automations are much faster here on 14.6 especially when you have a lot of different actions right here everything just runs faster even when downloading things from social media sites that runs faster as well. Like if you want to download media from Instagram or from Twitter, those all run faster. Just everything is a better experience here with shortcuts and 14.6. And I didn't see anybody mention this. It was on Reddit. I did find out about this from the shortcuts subreddit. So shout out to them for bringing this to my attention. But that's definitely something that is pretty noteworthy of a change in 14.6. And the other thing I wanted to mention are the security patches in iOS 14.6. So when I recorded that video, this was not out yet, but it did come out either later that day or on Tuesday, and I never got around to covering the security content in iOS 14.6, but there are five kernel bugs and six WebKit bugs that have been patched with this update. So if you needed more reason to update to iOS 14.6, you know, you want to keep your device as secure as possible. And there are quite a few, you know, security vulnerabilities still in 14.5 and 14.5.1. Now a minor change in 14.6 that I did not cover in the what's new video is this little section right here inside of wallet. This actually just populated a couple of days ago for me. And you can see introducing Apple card family and just kind of a prompt, you know, a little splash screen inside of the wallet application to tell you more about Apple card family and just an easier way to get to it and set it up. Now, another thing I noticed in my iOS 14.6 what's new video is a lot of people were asking me how I got these badges on my Apple Music where it says Dolby Atmos, high res lossless and Apple Digital Master. And you can see that right there, they're not screenshots. You can actually see this. Well, this is actually only for video albums because spatial audio is only available for video right now. So of course it will be coming to Apple Music sometime in June, sometime next month. But for now, if you go to like, for example, this video album right here, you can do it for any video album, but you have to add it to your library. So once you add it to your library and then you go to library and tap on it, that's when you will see these features right here. So I'm not sure if that's how it's going to be when spatial audio and lossless audio comes out for Apple Music, but for right now, you do have to add it to your library to see these things right here. Now they don't actually do anything that they didn't do previously because you still do have spatial audio, which of course we've had for quite a while now for videos, but it doesn't affect the audio as far as the high res lossless. I'm not sure, I don't have, you know, I have not tested that out to see if there's actually a difference, but that is there 
and I'm pretty sure that the lost list is not going to work because it just hasn't been pushed out by Apple yet and it's not going to until next month in June. Now, as far as bugs go, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but we still have issues with the music cue bug and also with AirPlay to HomePod. So I tested this out multiple times on iOS 14.6 over the past week, and I'm still having pretty major issues, especially with AirPlay to HomePod. It's still just so slow and it still doesn't even work every single time. However, the music cue bug does appear to be a lot better here where the first song, you know, sometimes would not appear. You wouldn't be able to move it right there. The three little dots would not appear, but that seems to be better in 14.6, but we still have major issues with AirPlay to HomePod. And as far as green tint goes, I did see a lot of people reporting that it got better in 14.6, but it's still not fully fixed. So, you know, maybe iOS 15 will fix that. Who knows? It took a long time with the iPhone 10R when that got fixed via software, you know, a couple years ago but hopefully this will be fixed in 14.7 or maybe iOS 15. Now, as far as iOS 14.7 beta one goes, I did want to address one feature that I showed a screenshot of in my original what's new video, but I didn't actually show it in action. And that is the timer in the HomePod. So if you long press on like a HomePod right here, or if you transfer, if you get close and hand off to the HomePod and you scroll down, you will see this right here where it shows the quick control timers right here. So obviously, you know, it still shows a lot of the placeholder, the code right there instead of the actual text. So clearly we're in a beta right now and I'm expecting that to be fixed and, you know, more polished in beta two, but you can see this right here. And if you tap on it, you could set the timer. So it works, but obviously everything is kind of overlapping and it's not a very pretty sight right here. But when you set something, if we go and set that timer, you could see that's what it looks like right there. And this is one of the only new features found so far in iOS 14.7, at least in the first beta. And that's kind of just a look at what it looks like because I only showed a screenshot in my original what's new video, but pretty cool there. And it's pretty cool that you don't have to actually ask Siri to set the timer. Now you can do it yourself. And as far as bugs and bug fixes go, unfortunately, I've not found any bug fixes in 14.7 beta one. I have that running on my iPhone 12 pro, which is my main device. And I've been using it for three straight days and I've not noticed any change in terms of bug fixes. So I still have the issues with the AirPlay to HomePod, Music Queue, all the things I've been talking about for the past like month or two now, I still have on 14.7 beta one. So this really feels like just another version of 14.6 really. And that kind of carries over to the performance as well because 14.7 beta one and the final version of 14.6 feel pretty much exactly the same in terms of performance. Again, I've been using the iPhone 12 Pro for three days on 14.7 beta one after running iOS 14.6, the final version for over a week. And you know, they feel the same. I didn't really notice any difference going from that to 14.7 beta one on this device. Now I did go ahead and run a new Geekbench test to show the scores, you know, after a few days of it being on the device. So there's no processes going on in the background, really nothing to, you know, affect these scores. And you can see that we got a 1599 and a 4029 here on 14.7 beta one. And if we compare that to when I first installed this on my device, you could see it's actually gotten higher, which is expected. You can see it went from a 1594 to a 1599 and a 4025 to a 4029. So pretty great scores there for a first beta. And as far as iOS 14.6 on the 12 pro max here, let's see when this finishes, if the scores have gotten better after a couple of days of being installed on the device. So we got a 1585 and a 3564, which is actually lower than the first score we ran. So pretty interesting results there. So again, 14.7, pretty much exactly the same, or if you, you know, rely on Geekbench to tell you which one's better, Geekbench says that 14.7 beta one is better than 14.6, the final version. So there you have it. Performance is gonna be pretty much the same. And according to Geekbench, the performance is actually better on 14.7. And as far as the battery life goes, this is the same as the performance. I mean, it's very good on both versions. 14.7 beta one does get slightly less on screen time on my iPhone 12 pro, but it's still the first beta. So that will likely improve with time and with more releases. Now I do know that many people have been complaining about the battery drain on iOS 14.6. But again, we see this with every release. I mean, every release, there's always some complaint, some group of people saying that, oh, this version caused me to have battery drain. But usually that's not a software version issue. I mean, that's usually a user error. That's usually the user's issue. They're probably doing something that's draining that battery. And it's not necessarily, you know, not always, I should say, the software version's fault. And I highly doubt that 14.6 just completely ruined the battery life 
for a good amount of people. So, you know, if you do have that, let me know in a comment down below and I can try to, you know, recommend some things, maybe some battery saving tips or something like that. But as far as my experience and most people's experience, the performance and the battery life are going to be pretty much the same on both versions. And really not too many people are complaining about either. So now what is next for Apple? And we did not get a 14.7 beta 2 this week. So I would expect that next week. Now we do have Memorial Day on Monday. So Apple is not going to be releasing anything on Monday. However, on Tuesday, we could see iOS 14.7 beta 2. We could see that any day next week, starting from Tuesday, pretty much any time up until Friday. I mean, I would not even be surprised if Apple released it on Friday, just because they've been very unpredictable. And then also because the next week is iOS 15 beta one. So expect a 14.7 beta at some point next week. And then the following week on June 7th is when we will see iOS 15 beta one when Apple kicks off their worldwide developers conference. And I will be live streaming that event and kind of just my reaction to that here on the channel. Now, as for other Apple news, aside from software, we did also have a few interesting rumors this week about upcoming Apple products, including the next AirPods and AirPods Pro models, a new MacBook Pro, a new Mac mini, and more details on the upcoming iPhone 13. So first off, we did get a new report from Mark Gurman at Bloomberg, who details that the third generation AirPods will be here later this year, confirming a lot of previous rumors that we saw and heard about for pretty much the past six months now. So these will likely be called the AirPods 3, and they will be very similar in design to the current AirPods Pro with the shorter stem and a new case. Now, these are not going to have noise cancellation or transparency mode or anything like that that the Pro models have. They're just going to be regular, just like the AirPods 1 and 2. Now, speaking of the pros, German did also report that the AirPods Pro 2 will be here next year with updated motion sensors with a focus on fitness tracking. So that should be very interesting. And Apple did also test out a smaller design of the AirPods Pro that would eliminate the stems from the earbuds. So that'll be interesting. And we've seen a lot of competitors do that like Samsung and Google with their Pixel Buds and Galaxy Buds. Now, an idea as to what these AirPods Pro without the stems could look like, we will be seeing the new Beats wireless earbuds launching next month and that actually leaked from LeBron James. LeBron James is actually wearing these and we got our first look at them there, but Apple will officially unveil these next month and we will see what, you know, Apple, the direction that Apple is heading with these stemless earbuds. And speaking of June, we could also be expecting a new MacBook Pro and a new Mac Mini. And this news comes from John Prosser who said a new MacBook Pro is confirmed to come at WWDC on Twitter. Now there will allegedly be 14 inch and 16 inch models with the M1X or the M2. We don't know which one it's gonna be called yet, but it will have one of those updated chipsets inside, which will offer exponentially more power than the M1 chip with the rumors pointing towards a 10 core processor with 16 or 32 core GPU options and RAM configurable up to 64 gigabytes. So massive improvements in these upcoming MacBook Pros. I cannot wait. I will definitely be getting my hands on one of those and bringing you guys coverage here on the channel. And then we did also see rumors and renders of an upcoming Mac mini with a new smaller design. And of course the M1X or M2 chip inside. And then finally, we did also get word that sensor shift camera stabilization is expected to be on all iPhone 13 models this year, not just the top tier model, like with the iPhone 12 lineup with the iPhone 12 pro max being the only phone that got that you know, feature on the camera. So this news comes courtesy of Digitimes. And this is something I'm pretty happy to see because number one, you know, it's a cool feature. I actually noticed the difference on my iPhone 12 Pro Max here. And number two, Apple is not going to be able to use that as something to upsell us this year on the, you know, biggest model on the most expensive model, which means we should have something new and even better on the Pro Max model for the iPhone 13. So I'm really excited to see that. But yeah, guys, there you have it. That is the latest on iOS 14.6 and iOS 14.7 beta one, along with the latest on Apple leaks and rumors. I did also publish a new video on iOS 15 leaks just a couple of days ago. So you might want to check that out. That's linked up in the cards and down in the description below as well. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss next weekend's follow up update and recap of the week. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.